I'm Black Pride, broadcasting out the UK into your homes. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, please like, subscribe and share. Um, I wanted to talk about mistakes, how they make you feel. Are you the type of person that beats yourself up? Are you a covert perfectionist? The reason why I decided to talk about this video today was because I'd set one of my clients some homework because she's a perfectionist and I thought to myself when she responded I said this is going to apply to so many people how many of us beat ourselves up when we make a mistake we find it so difficult to um, acknowledge or have the courage to own up to our mistakes some of us we get so defensive oh it wasn't me I didn't do it as though they're children. You know, you tell somebody, you ask somebody to do something, oh, it wasn't me, I didn't do it. Some people are absolutely petrified of making a mistake. They see it as a slant to their character. They see it as them being doing something wrong. They feel embarrassed. It's almost like you've um, caught them out doing something. But I believe when people have issues, with acknowledging mistakes is something to do with their background. It's something to do with how they grew up. Maybe they grew up in a critical background with people where they were dealt harshly when they made a mistake. Because we find so many people and then that translates into perfectionism. When you um when you want to when you keep trying to go over the same piece to make sure you don't make a mistake. You don't want anybody to find any fault with your work. No one is perfect. No one. And if you don't make mistakes, you cannot learn. And some people, if you actually give them feedback and say, well, look, um, I don't like the way you've done that or that part doesn't look right. They see it as such a a, a slant. It's almost like you've stabbed them in the back. They cannot take any form of criticism. It's as though they feel they are perfect. And if anything goes wrong, they take it personally. They take it, you know, it's almost like it's you're attacking them. If something doesn't go right, if something doesn't go as expected, that's how they behave. So those are what you call covert perfectionists, those people who don't even realise they're perfectionists, but their behaviour tells you that they are, because everything that they do has got to, in their eyes, has to be perfect. And they give themselves such a hard time if they're not perfect. And I'll give you an example of um, me, well, one of my experiences of making mistakes and feeling as though it, you know, I'd made the worst mistake in the world. And I was working um, for this organ international organization in America. And I had just decided to apply for a higher job. And I've been quite happy in my, you know, my lower grade, but oh no, I decide that I want to elevate myself and go up a notch. So I applied for this job for the Assistant Secretary General's PA, and I got it. And I was so pleased with myself. But I didn't know about, the, I hadn't studied the culture of the organization. And I hadn't, I didn't know much about the person I was working with. I'm very proactive, I'm, I'm very helpful, that's a type of nature I have. So um, when a doctor, a Chinese doctor, called the office and said he wanted a report and I knew where the report was and I wanted to be super efficient. I sent the report off to him and he wrote me back and sung my praises and he said, excellent job. I must tell blah, blah, blah um, what you've done. Anyway, when he tells my boss that I had provided him with a report, she flipped. How dare you? consort with somebody of that level. He's a Chinese, I don't, he was higher than a doctor, Chinese consultant anyway. He was high up there. How dare you? You're an administrator, you're a PA. 
And honestly, she took it to the board and she said she didn't want me to be her PA anymore. And I was devastated. I chastised myself about that mistake. I don't even know if it was a mistake. It was my nature. It's my nature to, if I can do something, if I can facilitate something, I'll do it. I didn't know nothing about the culture. I didn't know nothing about that. But it it just, it, I can't say it destroyed me, but I was distraught. It had taken me so long to get a permanent job in that organisation because it's one of those organisations you get fixed term contract, fixed term contract, fixed term contract and then after about four years you get a permanent contract. So I was at that point where I'd got a permanent contract and by her telling personnel that she couldn't work with me, it sent me back into a fixed term contract and I didn't like the security and I just said you know what I made a mistake and even though they were offering me other jobs I just felt so insecure and unstable and I decided I was going to leave. I didn't have faith in myself and I didn't have faith in the organisation that they would keep me so I left but that is because at that point in my life I hated making mistakes. I was a kind of perfectionist. I didn't want anybody to find fault in me. I didn't, you know, and no one's perfect. If somebody told me I'd done something wrong, I'd take it personally. Instead of taking it as something I can learn from. I remember um, one of my line managers in the UK, they always, always used to say, pay attention to detail, pay attention to detail. My interpretation of that was, you want me to be perfect. No one's perfect. But, You know, and I took it hard because I'm thinking no matter how I try, I am bound to make some kind of error. And it wasn't even like they were major errors. It was almost like if you didn't put a comma in or something ridiculous, something so petty that didn't affect, the that wouldn't have affected the quality of the overall product. But they made it seem as though it would. And so I felt like crap. Anyway, um, it got to the point, even in that situation where they wanted to pull me up. And I don't know what it is about me, why people feel threatened by my presence or by the way I react. I mean, I do try. Not, I'm not hostile. I'm not aggressive. But, you know, I, I don't know what it is. Anyway, in the end, it looked like they wanted to get rid of me. And this is in the UK. And I got stressed again. Oh, you know, I know you've got to pay attention to detail. You can't be making mistakes. You know, what can you do? And I was stressing myself out. I was looking at one document about three or four times to make sure I hadn't made a mistake. Checking it, checking it, checking it, checking it. And then if they found, and then it came as though they were actually looking. You know, when you work in some organisations, when they want you out, they look for literally anything the slightest little thing and so then it looked like they were looking for any little thing and there's me trying to kind of avert that by looking at checking it six or seven times over and over and still finding stuff and I'm just like this is not good for my house but what I'm trying to say is that We all make mistakes and we can learn from our mistakes. And even though I considered that, okay, paying attention to detail wasn't such a big thing. It is a big thing. And I did need to pay attention to detail. And it did mean me working in a different way. It meant me stopping them. They came and said, Myrna, can you do this? I'd say, can you hold on a minute? I'm in the middle of something. You can either send me an email with the instructions or... You can wait. And that's how I had to handle it. Because sometimes it's the distractions. And in my job, I'm pulled from pillar to post every bloody minute. And so you cannot, and you know, the work I do is so, it requires so much concentration that, you know, all you've got to do is have somebody say, um, oh, can you do this? Or can you make this phone call? Or have you got this? 
and then you're you take your eye off of the computer you forget where you are and boff you've made a mistake so i don't beat myself up anymore and I don't think anybody should. We learn from our mistakes. And the only mistake you can make is the one you don't learn from. Some people make a mistake. Like they don't, um, you, you can carry mistakes on in situations. Like some people, they make the mistake of not speaking their minds. They hold it in. They are they're so afraid of making a mistake in the way they say something so they don't say it. You get people like that. They they try they want to make sure that they don't offend someone or they want to make sure that they say it in exactly the right way and then if they say it and then it blows up then they kind of chastise themselves. Oh, I wish I'd never said anything. If I hadn't said anything, this wouldn't have happened. And they beat themselves up. But it does it the thing is is that we need to get off of our chest what we need to get off of our chest and i believe if your heart is in the right place what comes out of your mouth is going to come out right it's not your fault how the other person takes what you're saying that's their issue it's not yours if you're coming from a good place if you're coming from a manipulative place, a selfish place, a place of resentment, a place of anger, a place of hostility, a place of hatred, then it's going to come out. They say what proceeded out of your heart comes out of your mouth. So that is going to come out. And yes, it's going to come out wrong. And yes, there's going to be repercussions. But even then, so what? You've said what you've got to say. It hasn't turned out how you wanted to say. Tough. Maybe next time you might need to, you might have to think about how, you know, how you reacted, how you responded. But it doesn't mean that what you've said is a mistake. Maybe the way you said it might have been a mistake. It, well, not even that it's a mistake. It might not have got you the result that you wanted. That sometimes happens. So sometimes at work, you know, you get people who say things to you is either inappropriate or it's offensive and you sit there and you think, I want to say this, but you know you can't say exactly what you want to say. So you seethe over it and you seethe over it and then when you see them, you caught your eye after them. And you're like, you want to tell them to do this or you want to tell them to F off or you want, you know, but you hold it until you reach this point where you say, okay, I'm going to say something to them now. Now I'm calmed down. I'm going to say something and I'm going to say, look, I don't like the way you spoke to me the other day. It was totally inappropriate. And sometimes I say, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't mean it. Oh, I didn't mean it like that. I didn't think you'd take it that way. Oh, I'm so sorry. You know me. I'm always joking. Yeah, right. You know what you were saying. You just thought you'd get away with it. But all I'm saying is that, you know, it can be a mistake to hold back and you know because then you repeat the same pattern if you're afraid to speak out about something that's bothering you is that going to follow you everywhere you go in other areas you know like in jobs with family with um other situations i don't know so you have to think about what it is, why you are afraid to say something. Is it because you're afraid of making a mistake? And you don't want to be responsible for that mistake that you've made. A lot of people, they make these mistakes. They don't want to be responsible for it. They, they want to blame it on someone else. You find a lot of people, you think they're about five or ten years old. They make a mistake or they do something wrong. And it's like, well, I didn't do it. It wasn't me. You know, it must have been there before. Oh, I didn't do that. You know what I mean? Adults behaving in that way. You know, getting all defensive. So what if somebody pulls you up on something? So what? But some people, it's like, oh, you, you've attacked their credibility. You know, they're so sensitive. They, they feel embarrassed. They, you know, they, they just take it so personally become self-conscious and there's nothing you can do about people's reaction to what you say nothing you can do about it 
So, yeah, you can get angry, you can get hostile, but it doesn't get you anywhere. What you need to know is to get the result you want, how are you going to do that? And you might have to make a few mistakes along the way in how you how you deliver your message, but you'll get there in the end. But it's about not being afraid of criticism, not being, you know, not taking feedback personally, not being afraid of making mistakes. It is so important. If we don't make mistakes, we don't improve, we don't learn, we don't, we're not creative. You know, people who make mistakes and it doesn't work, you have to think, hmm, that didn't work. How can I make it work? Then their head starts buzzing around and they say, yeah, maybe if I try it this way, maybe if I try it that way, maybe that will make it work. Like Edison said, after 10,000, you know, it's just 10,000 of ways of not getting it right. It wasn't a mistake. So it's about changing your perception and your attitude towards mistakes. There are a lot of perfectionists out there for whatever reason. Maybe it's because of their upbringing. Maybe because they, they had high demands on them when they were young. The consequences were really severe and they're absolutely petrified of making a mistake. And they don't even realise that when they're driving themselves not to do something. Sometimes people don't even want to try anything new in case they make a mistake. I know people, you say, oh, why don't you try to do something different? Why don't you go into a different area? Oh, no, no, I don't know nothing about that. They're not willing to learn. All they're worried about is that they might make a mistake and that will give somebody something, Having have some, that will give somebody something over them. And they can't have that. So rather than trying to do something new and making a mistake and learning from that and getting to know some, you know, getting to improve on it, they don't do anything at all and they become stagnant. That's the, that is the penalty for covert perfectionism. When you are afraid to start something new or learn something different because you're afraid of making a mistake. And it's such a shame. But, you know, I hope this video helps. I wanted to um, tell you, uh, give you some quotes that people have said about mistakes. Uh, where is it? I don't know. Uh, Yeah, I was thinking, you know, another one, another mistake I always chastise myself over is I had a bungalow. It's a beautiful bungalow. It was like my dream home. I'd done it just exactly how I wanted it. It had arches. It had, you know, uh, beautiful corp. You know that? What do you call that stuff? Corvex on the ceiling. It was handcrafted by this Turkish guy, and the arch was all handcrafted. It and the tiles beautiful shiny type. it was absolutely beautiful and I always say ah oh, I made a mistake um selling that place because I panicked once again we make mistakes out of fear sometimes we don't want to wait things out so we jump we jump shit before we even know what the outcome might have been which is what I did and but there again I forget that I actually made a considered decision Sometimes when I think I'm making these mistakes, I've actually thought it through. I, I do, I'm not an impulsive person. But then on reflection, I forget that I've thought it through and I think I've made a mistake. But then I think to myself, well, you know, your, your electricity and gas bill is £350 a month. You know what I mean? And then I think, you know, where you are now, it's like 86. You know, I'm already saving over, over nearly, uh, nearly 300 quid a month. So there was reasons behind me selling it. But even then, I keep thinking about the beauty of the place. But I have more peace of mind where I am. And, well, relative peace of mind. But the fact of the matter is, is that I was chastising myself for a while, calling it a mistake. And all I'm saying is that 
it's not a mistake because if I was still there, who knows? I could have I could have had headaches, I could have had stress, I could have had all sorts. So yeah, um, let me see what these quotes are. Enough of my mistakes, we all make them, so I'm not going to belabor the point. I don't believe that we should call them mistakes, but decisions we learn from. Mistakes help us to gain knowledge. Uh, we get to know what works and what doesn't from each error we come across. Although relationship mistakes are a bit more difficult and take an emotional toll. Um, I guess when you make a mistake in a relationship, it will tell you what is important to you. Um, what else is there? The only real mistake is the one, like I said, from which we learn nothing. Some of us find is that we don't always make the same mistakes, but variations of the same mistakes. So you might, you might say, oh, well, it might, it might make a mistake. It might not be the same mistake, but it's, it's not too far different. <laughs> so you just need to make sure that you expand it and concentrate a bit more and, you know, do what you can. Like I said, we're all fallible. When what we are attempting is not working, we look for a new solution. I've mentioned that. If you have made mistakes, even serious ones, there's always another chance for you. What we call failure is not the falling down, but the staying down. We obtain references each time we try different approaches as we attempt to achieve our goals. We become better each time we are trying something new. We wouldn't gain those references if we didn't make mistakes. I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that it won't work. Thomas Edison. The only way to avoid making mistakes is to have no new ideas. We become a stronger person each time we acknowledge our mistakes and move on to do better next time. We come to understand that being brave is all about admitting to our faults and growing from them. Mistakes are, are always forgivable if one has the courage to admit them. That's Bruce Lee. Um, we learn to appreciate those who have helped us and we learn to deal with the people who have done us wrong. We learn to be wiser each time we make a mistake because we get to see a different side of the people we thought we knew. Because sometimes if you don't make a mistake with people and everything is all hunky-dory, you don't see the other side of that person. It's only when something doesn't go quite how you want it to go, you see the other side. Otherwise, you wouldn't even know what that person is thinking. Without making mistakes, we would not get to see different sides of those we deal with. Some people come into your life as blessings. Some people come into your life as lessons. That's Mother Teresa. Mistakes teach us how to experiment. Innovation comes from experimenting, which often leads to making mistakes. Without those mistakes, we wouldn't be able to innovate. Sorry about that. And create better things. We would also not be able to become a better person without knowing what we did wrong. So mistakes help us to better understand ourselves. Mistakes help us understand that our biggest enemy can be ourselves. And like I said, it can be because you can beat yourself up so much. We learn to reflect on our own mistakes by becoming our shortcoming. We, became, we become stronger people as we come to know our own strengths and weaknesses. It wouldn't be as easy for us to understand ourselves without the mistakes we made. And sometimes, you know, I call, I'm always beating myself, oh, why I make this bloody mistake again? How did I end up in this bloody situation again? But, you know, they're not, the, they're just, like I said, sometimes it can be variation of the same situation. So Raja Hindustani wrote, life without mistakes is like Bill Clinton without Monica. Life without mistakes is like Tiger Woods without, vid without a video clip. It's like North Korea without Kim Jong, without Kim, without Kanye, like Real Madrid without Ronaldo, like Tinder without Match, like Earth without humans, like America without Trump, like Jerusalem without religion. Some people are afraid to admit to mistakes because they feel embarrassed. They don't want to be admonished or criticised. It takes courage to own up to your mistakes. A lot of people don't realise it takes courage. It's only a coward that doesn't own up to mistakes. 
beautiful, but it is the only way we grow and learn. If we grew up in a critical environment, that could be the reason why we don't admit to making mistakes or we could become self-conscious when we realise we've made some. Some people, when they realise they make a mistake, it's like, oh my God, as big, big adults, they're hiding stuff. And you know, have you noticed in some relationships, <laughs> you get these people who, who don't want to finish anything. You know, they leave the little dregs in the bottom of a jar or little dregs in the bottle of a bottle or... Um, or a carton. I believe that's because at some point they were told off for finishing something, for finishing the drink, for finishing whatever. So rather than be told off, they forget that they're adults. They leave those little dregs in the bottom of a carton or in the bottom on the bottom in the bottom of a bottle. I'm sure it's got something to do with that. That mis that mistake mentality. I don't want to be the one. Oh, I don't want to be the one to finish the milk. Oh, I might get into trouble subconsciously. If I finish the milk, I might get into trouble. Some people, you know, their childhood demons don't leave them. Okay, if we grew up in a critical, oh, I've already said that, haven't I? If we grow up in a critical environment, that could be a reason why we don't admit to making mistakes. Or we, yeah, I said that. Every system uses the mistakes as a feedback to improve itself in the future. Perfection doesn't exist in reality. Everything has some sort of error. It's like a paradox. A mistake is required for improvement and repeated improvements lead to perfection. I got that bit out of Cora. I thought that was really, really good. Perfection means absence of mistakes, but it doesn't exist. But perfection doesn't exist. So mistakes would always be there. As we all, as we all know, is only God that's perfect. The world is perfect, but the people in it are imperfect. Our best teacher in life is our mistakes. Mistakes help us to discover ourselves. With each single mistake, we learn new lessons, which is also called as our experiences. New lessons, experiences, mistakes, whatever you want to call them. It's all a part of the life experience. We do mistakes in every aspect of our lives and from each mistakes we grow and we learn something new. A child could not learn to walk if she or he never kept falling. We learn to forgive ourselves and this teaches us to forgive other persons for their mistakes. Because if you have such a high... Um, a high expectation of yourself to be perfect you expect other people to be perfect as well so you don't even realize that you're imposing your perfectionist attitude on other people some people that have such high standards that they put themselves under pressure and then those around them who can't meet it you know because they're fallible they're not perfect anymore they get you know they get hard. They get hard done by all kinds of things, criticised and all sorts. So, um, so it's about learning to forgive ourselves for our mistakes. To make a mistake is no big deal. You get up and say, oh, "I'm sorry. How can I fix it? Is there anything I can do to fix it? If you can't do anything to fix it, if you can't buy another one, if you you can't sort it, you know, I'm sorry. You're gonna kill me." I was watching um, one of those um, antique shows and this woman, she had a, um, it was like a pig, China pig that had been handed down to her from her grandmother or something and her daughter dropped it and it cracked and that daughter lived with that guilt for years and then she took it to a renovator and the renovator made it like new, you couldn't even see the crack. And the mother said to her, I'm so glad it's um, fixed because it was from my grandfather and blah, blah, blah. But you can imagine the guilt she put her daughter through. The guilt so that even after several years, that girl felt as though she had to put back that pig, that China pig. I think it was one of those money boxes back together again to make it perfect so her mother could get off of her back. That's what I'm saying a lot of times. It's our parents that force us to be how we are today and we don't even realise it.
And that girl said, I'm just so relieved I was able to get put it back how it was originally. After all those years, can you imagine? Drop the bloody thing, the mother should just say, oh, you know. Take a photograph of it. Take a photograph of it. If something's precious to you, take a photograph of it. If something happens to it, you still got the photograph. I mean, please. It's a, some people are just so attached to material stuff. If it breaks, it breaks. And that's a part of perfectionism, you know, because I used to get paranoid if I used to break some, something. If I used to break a glass. If I broke anything, I'd be like, oh, my God, you know, I broke a glass, I broke this. Now, you know, I've, I, I um, hit my car the other day, coming out of the car park. Big scratch across the bloody side of the car. I, I got out, I looked at it to see what the damage was. I just got in my car and drove off. I, I can't be asked. I'm not chastising myself anymore. I'm not giving myself a hard time anymore. If I drop a plate, if I drop a cup, so what? It's not a big deal drop crumbs on the floor it's not a big deal but for some people it is a big deal but anyway um what else have i got here so so we're not to hold our head down in shame if we make a mistake or several mistakes just learn from the lesson and keep going um somebody said i come from a school of thought that there is no such thing as a mistake, just great learning experiences. Famous quotes about mistakes. We must we must not say every mistake is a foolish one because we've got a habit of saying, oh God, I made such a foolish mistake. Remember, we learn from our mistakes. Just look at how I transitioned from what I called a mistake. You know, sometimes you have relationships, you think, oh my God, it was a bloody mistake. And then when you look at the children, out of that mistake or even the grandchildren or whatever it is when you look at where you are now and how life would be different if you hadn't made that mistake it's not a mistake like they said it's a learning mistake it's a learning experience while one person hesitates or stops because he feels inferior the other person is busy making mistakes and becoming superior because you like i said you have some people they're so afraid of making mistakes and feeling as though they're going to be criticised, they actually become inferior. Whereas the person who's made mistakes and is learning from them and is getting better and better, that person becomes superior. Experience is that marvellous thing that enables you to recognise a mistake when you make it again. And that's experience. And that's, you know, that is good because you actually know when you've made a mistake and you can nip it in the bud and try to correct it. To avoid situations in which you might make mistakes may be the biggest mistake of all. And that's what I'm saying. Some people avoid situations where they might make a mistake and they are the covert perfectionists. They don't realise that's what they're doing, but that is what they're doing. And they never grow and they never learn anything new. They just stay in the same. They just become stagnant. They just, you know, they don't evolve. Mistakes are part of the Jews one pays for a full life. Sophia Loren. A life spent spending mistakes is not only more honourable, but more useful than a life spent doing nothing. George Bernard Shaw. Yeah. Freedom is not worth having if it does not include the freedom to make mistakes. Mahatma Gandhi. Experience is the name everyone gives to their mistakes. Oscar Wilde. Mistakes obviously show us what needs improving. Without mistakes, how would we know what we had to work on? Peter McWilliams. Creativity is allowing yourself to make mistakes. Art is knowing which ones to keep. Scott Adams. Success seems to be connected with action. Successful people keep moving. They make mistakes, but they don't quit. Conrad Hilton. Anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new. Albert Einstein. All men make mistakes, but only wise men learn from their mistakes. Winston Churchill. The only real mistakes is the one from which we learn nothing. John Powell. Fall down seven times and get up eight. Chinese proverb. A well-adjusted person is one who makes the same mistake twice without getting nervous. I love that. Alexander Hamilton.
So that's it, peeps. So I hope it's helped. I hope if you are a person who is a perfectionist, who doesn't like making mistakes, who beats themselves up for making a mistake, who dreads criticism, who doesn't like feedback, I hope this has helped you realise that, you know, we're all infallible, no one is perfect, and we don't even want to be perfect. Let's take each other. Let's take us all, warts and all. That's all. Bye-bye.